All right, welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're jumping right into a topic that, I'll admit, has a pretty intimidating name, Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. Yeah, have you ever heard those words before? If you're just getting a diagnosis, or maybe a loved one is, hearing that for the first time, it can be a lot. I mean, it's a total mouthful, right? And it just sounds, well, complicated. But you know what? It really doesn't have to be that scary. So let's just dive right in. The whole point of this explainer is to strip away all that complexity and give you the straightforward information you actually need. We're going to make this simple. Okay, first things first. Section one, what is Waldenstrom's? And let's just call it WM from here on out. It's a lot easier. Okay, so what are we talking about here? At its heart, WM is a rare, slow-growing blood cancer. And the main thing that defines it is this. Your body starts making way too much of an abnormal antibody protein. That protein is called IgM. And here's a little tidbit. It's the largest antibody we have, which is where that macro part of macroglobulinemia comes from. Big protein. So to really get what's going on, you have to look inside the bone marrow. Think of your bone marrow as this perfectly run factory, right? It's constantly producing all the healthy red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets you need to function. But with WM, these abnormal cancer cells start showing up. And they don't leave. They just keep accumulating, like squatters. And they start crowding the place out. And that means there's less and less room for the factory to produce the good stuff, the healthy cells we actually need. And that crowding isn't just happening on a microscopic level. You can actually feel it. When your body can't make enough red blood cells because of all that crowding, well, that's what leads to anemia. And that's why one of the biggest, most common signs of WM is that really deep, can't-shake-it kind of fatigue. But wait, there's actually a second punch here. It's not just about this cells crowding the bone marrow. It's also about that IgM protein they're pumping out. Remember how we said it's a macro protein? It's big. And when you get too much of it in your bloodstream, it can literally make your blood thick and sludgy. That's a condition called hyperviscosity. And as you can imagine, that can cause a whole other set of problems with circulation. Okay, so that's what it is. Now, how do doctors figure out if you have it? Let's get into the diagnosis. First thing to know is that this is a very rare disease. Seriously, we're talking just 1% to 2% of all blood cancers. To put that in perspective, in the United States, that means we're looking at maybe 1,500 to 3,000 new cases a year. That's not a lot. And because it's so rare, that leads to a really important point. Your average community oncologist, they just don't see this very often. They might see few, if any, cases in their entire career. And that's exactly why, if you get this diagnosis, getting a second opinion from a true WM specialist is so, so important. The good news is that the diagnostic process itself is pretty straightforward. It's really a two-step deal. Step one, a blood test. They're looking for that signature abnormal IgM protein. If they find it, then comes step two, a bone marrow biopsy. That's the one that gives the final confirmation because they can actually see the WM cancer cells right there in the marrow. And that rarity naturally leads to the two biggest, most personal questions that are probably on your mind. Why me and can I pass this on to my kids? Let's get right into those. Okay, so here's the deal. The exact cause, we don't know. The genetic mutations that doctors find are things you acquire during your life. They're not something you were born with. And this is critical. It is not passed down from parent to child. You can't give it to your kids. Now, there is a little nuance here. About a quarter of patients do have a relative with WM or a similar kind of blood cancer, which suggests a sort of familial predisposition. But that's very different from it being a directly inherited disease. Okay, let's move on to how WM actually develops. It's usually not something that just pops up out of nowhere. It tends to follow a path, or what we can think of as stages. So for many people, the whole journey starts with something called MGUS. This is a common, non-cancerous precursor stage. From there, it might, and that's a key word, might progress to what's called asymptomatic or smoldering WM. At this point, you have the disease, but you have zero symptoms. It's just smoldering. And only if and when symptoms actually show up does it become symptomatic WM. That's the point when you start talking about treatment. And this is probably one of the most important things to hear. Just because you're on this path doesn't mean you'll reach the end of it. Progression is absolutely not guaranteed. In fact, most people with that MGS precursor, they never get WM at all. 
it is totally possible to stay in that MGS or that asymptomatic stage forever. And that's why the standard of care for so many people is something called watch and wait. It sounds passive, but it's actually very active. If you don't have any symptoms, there is absolutely no benefit to starting treatment and dealing with all the side effects. So instead, your doctor just keeps a close eye on you with regular checkups and blood tests. You just watch and wait. But, okay, what if you do get symptoms? What happens when it's finally time to treat? Well, this is where the story gets really, really good. Because the treatment landscape has just completely changed for the better. So, broadly speaking, there are two main ways to go about treatment. The first approach is continuous therapy. These are usually pills you take at home and you just keep taking them. The other approach is fixed duration therapy. This is usually infusions you get at a clinic for a set amount of time, say a few months, and then you're done. You stop and hopefully enjoy a nice long remission without any treatment. And the best part? There are a ton of really effective options in both categories now. So, when you're talking to your doctor, here are a few really important things to keep in your back pocket. First, treatment is based on how you feel, your symptoms, not just what your IgM number is. Second, we said it before, but it's worth repeating, get that second opinion from a specialist. It's crucial. And finally, talk to your medical team about everything. If you have a side effect, tell them. There are almost always ways to manage them and make things easier for you. All right, let's wrap this up with what is honestly the most important part of the entire story. Living well with WM, the long-term outlook, and all the support that's out there for you. This, this is just incredible. Not too long ago, a WM diagnosis meant an average outlook of maybe three to five years. Look at that. Today, thanks to amazing research and all these new therapies, the average life expectancy is 15 to 20 years or even longer. The progress has been absolutely stunning, and it's not slowing down. And please, please hear this. You are not alone in this. There is a huge, active community out there just waiting to support you. We're talking about amazing organizations like the International Waldenstrom's Foundation and others. They've got information, support groups, you name it. They are an incredible resource. So we'll leave you with this question to think about. Research is moving faster every single year. The story of WM has just been one of amazing progress. So the question we're asking now isn't just, how do we manage this? It's, what's the next big breakthrough? What's just around the corner for patients? It's a really exciting and hopeful time. Thanks so much for joining us for this explainer.